Hello. You know, as we read the paper, watch TV, listen to people talking, we often hear lots of questions about who's in charge. You know, during this time, it's easy to start worrying that nobody seems to be able to control the situation that we're in. And this reminded me of a really well-known passage in Mark's Gospel. Let's have a look at the story. Picture a big freshwater lake, so long you can't see from one end to the other and it takes several hours to sail across. And so deep, two elephants, two rhinos and a giraffe could stand on the sandy bottom, one on top of the other and the giraffe's neck still wouldn't break the surface of the water. Now, this lake is full of fish. It's a good thing we only imagine the animals, otherwise all the fish might die of shock. And you know, usually gentle breeze just plays across the surface and the waves lap softly against the shore. But every now and again, there's a sudden wind sweeps down from the hills, whipping up the waves into an absolute fury. And for a few hours, a storm will rage. Then everything goes back to normal. The lake is actually called the Sea of Galilee, and it's famous because a great deal of Jesus's teaching and preaching took place around its shores. His base, Capernaum, was a lakeside town and a number of his, fish, his disciples were local fishermen. So let's imagine Jesus into the picture. Let's picture him standing in a boat, a few metres from the shore, teaching to the huge crowd who've gathered to hear him. It's late afternoon and he's been talking to them for hours, telling them lots of different parables. You know, a parable's a story with a spiritual meaning. As usual, even though lots of the listeners aren't sure what the parable means, no one is in a hurry to go home. They're out for the day which is nice for them, but hard on the speaker. And by this stage, Jesus is getting a bit worn out. So here's what he decides to do. He gets the disciples to push the boat out a bit further from the shore. Then he tells them to climb back on board, hoist the sail and away they go, heading for the opposite side of the lake. Whoa, what a relief. I'm not sorry to see the back of that lot. Peter heaves a sigh of relief as the crowd disappears from view. Yeah, there must have been thousands of them, his companions agree. They're actually feeling a little bit smug. It's great being able to sail away with Jesus. They're looking forward to their own private teaching session when he'll tell them exactly what the parables mean. You know, sometimes I wonder why the master takes so much out of himself talking to the crowds. Most people haven't got a clue what he's on about, says Peter. Andrew nods. You know, when he told them that the kingdom of heaven was like a mustard seed today, they probably thought they'd get closer to God by going planting one in their gardens. When really he meant his kingdom might have small beginnings, but it will grow really big, finishes Matthew. They all look around to see if Jesus is impressed by their cleverness. But Jesus, exhausted by all his teaching and preaching, has fallen asleep on a cushion at the back of the boat. Shh, keep your voices down, Peter warns. We don't want to wake him. Meanwhile, the stiff little breeze has become stronger and the waves lapping around the side of the boat have become just a wee bit higher and the sky overhead has grown darker. I don't like this. I feel sick, says Thomas. Some of the other disciples don't like it either, but the fishermen among them are glad of the chance to show off their skills. As the lake begins to heave and thrash, they lower the sails and grab the oars. Hang on to the sides, we're in for a rough ride, predicts Peter. With the little boat, caught up in the most terrible storm. The wind howls down from the hills, the waves explode all around them. One minute the boat is lurching sideways up a mountain of water, the next it's plunging down the other side. Peter's made some risky crossings in his time, but this is the worst. The boat's being hurled around like a piece of driftwood. It could well go under at any moment. Well, what are you waiting for? Wake Jesus, Peter yells. Wake up, master, the disciples cry. Don't you care that we're drowning? Poor Jesus. He never gets a minute's peace. If it's not one thing, it's another. Here he is being woken out of a sound sleep by a crowd of panicking disciples. So what's all this about then? He pulls himself to his feet. For a moment, he takes in the crashing, the thrashing, the shrieking, the squalling, the duet of winds and waves. Then he raises his hand. Quiet. Be still, he orders. And immediately the wind shuts up and the waves smooth out and everything is calm. Wow, the disciples don't quite know what they expected, but it certainly wasn't this. In some ways, Jesus calming the storm is more scary than the storm itself. At least storms are natural. 
but a human being telling the wind and the waves to, what to do. That's awesome. They hardly dare look Jesus in the face. What's wrong now? Why are you so afraid? Have you still no faith? He inquires gently. They know he's asking them to believe something. When they left the shore, they thought they were sailing away with an expert religious teacher who made them feel superior to the rest of the world. But now, after that performance, they don't know what to think. So they scratch their heads, struggling to come to terms with what's just happened. Who is this man, they ask themselves. What sort of person can command the wind and the waves? Jesus doesn't seize the opportunity to make any dramatic claims for himself. He's not the sort of God who forces belief down anyone's throat. He's there and he loves them and he is in control. So let's just take some time to pray. Psalm 20 says, may the Lord answer you when you're in distress. May the name of God of Jacob protect you. May he send you help from the sanctuary and grant you support from Zion. Lord, we thank you for your grace and goodness. We thank you that you are our God of help and support. We thank you for your compassion. You never abandon us. Lord, we pray for those who are worried and distressed. May you answer them in their need and grant them protection and give them your peace. In Jesus' name, Amen. God is a great big God. Our God is a great big God. Our God is a great big God and he holds us in his hand.